you know, she does next. Mm -hmm. And that was years ago. That was before the follow function was even a feature on Facebook, yeah. which now you can actually follow people even if you can't friend them, like mm -hmm. if they have too many friends, etc. Right. Or if they don't have a page. Right. But, so, you know, I just kind of always, you posted really interesting things, and it was weird, because like, at, at a certain point, I was like, I've been reading your stuff for so long, and it's like I wanted to engage, but it's like, how do you do that in a way that doesn't come off as creepy? Right. Right? <laughs> Which is like a little bit of a tricky thing. Well, it worked out really well because of the whole art pool thing, weirdly enough. So i had been working for Marina doing a lot of things for free, my husband and I both. And he did the graphic design for the ad that you saw on the paper. Really? And he did all of the posters for her for about a year for all of the um, art parties. And so I had been working with her since 2010, doing hair and makeup for all of the fashion shows and things like that. And we had collaborated for so long that when I decided to do that project and that exhibition, she offered her space to me. So I was the very first person to do a solo show at our really, Pool, and also the first person to show in that space. Like I think that, I think that definitely, especially when thinking of charity and Philip you know, philanthropic work and things like that, you can do a lot with a little. Mm -hmm. And maybe sometimes when it comes to the value of art, people say, oh, but that's only worth this much, you know, like I'm paying only a little bit for it, but I'm getting a lot more. Like, I don't know how to, I don't think it's the same. I think that where you're coming from is yes, you can do a lot with a little, but when it comes to paying for art and for skills and things like that, people don't understand the value of that skill. Exactly. And that deserves more money than, of course. than just like, oh, Joe Schmo can also put makeup on someone else, you know? Exactly, because it's not the same caliber. That's right. the thing. Realizing that you have choices does not mean that all of them have the same equal weight and merit. Right. <laughs> exactly. Right? Like, like if not everyone would think about this very silly equivalent. way. Is like, I could go out there and dance on the sandbar and go <laughs> meet dancing, but it won't be nearly as effective or evocative unless you have someone who has some training. Or I tried to do makeup for everybody. Right. You know, <laughs> it's like a cut corners. Yeah. You know, it's exactly. like, and so it's like you're limiting your, your scope of, you know, help and things like that by saying no. Which is silly. It because is. Because then what you're doing is you're even restricting the flow of potential new people who can hear about your idea. Mm -hmm. And also, every dollar gets paid the same way. Right. It doesn't matter who it comes from. And sometimes it doesn't even have to be physical dollar amounts. That's that's the whole point. And so, that's why, exactly, like, working with you this week has been really great because, like, I'm here, and if I were to, say, charge you for the work that I did on Monday, mm -hmm. and I would have been like, okay, I did eight makeups, I worked so many hours, this is how much each one breaks down to. Mm -hmm. It... It would have been a dollar amount that would have been like, okay, or whatever. But I actually but, do want to ask everyone what that dollar amount would be because what, I want yeah, to show want to know. what I spent, yeah. what the value, retail value mm -hmm. of everything that we had, and that includes you, eight looks for makeup, the nail art place, what the retail cost right. of that would have been. And then you just count on that. Exactly. Exactly. So, so it's all like, of those things, for, for, you know, Patrick's rate, right. et cetera. But then I had to factor in like, okay, well... You pay for dinner on one day. You pay for this cab. You did this. You, did, you stay, gave me a place you know? to stay in New York. You know, yeah. you introduced me to Patrick, who then shot a great headshot for me that I would have probably had to pay a hundred dollars for. You know, and mm -hmm. it's like it all comes out in the wash, mm -hmm. and it all comes out in a very productive way. Mm -hmm. Well, and also to then help people get over this idea of what they think failure is, so they yeah. misinterpret it as like not ever trying. And I'm like, no, no, no. You're basically like fine honing an idea. Mm -hmm fine-tuning an idea when you have more things that don't work because you're yeah. getting closer to something that does. Right, and it's like when you when you try to do something, if you, you can think of it in many ways. It's like, I tried to do this thing and I failed. Well, why did you fail? Mm -hmm. This way. Okay, well, now we're going to try and change that particular thing. For the future. For the future. And it's, that's the way it is with everything. Like, I think about that all the time and it's all about small variables. Like, for mm -hmm. instance, the way I can make it immediately interesting for me is like, in building prosthetics, it's a very tenuous material working in foam latex you have all of these ingredients that you have to time when they go in and you have to put them in at the right time with the right measurements and you have to whip it in a stand mixer for a certain amount of time and then you have to wait and then put it in your molds really quickly and put them in the oven and let them bake and then hope that they come out and you have to make sure that your temperature of the room is a certain temperature because everything affects the scientific process of this doing its job and oftentimes it doesn't work out it literally is like you have to sit down and make a, a graph of all More the variables words. and know which proportions of measurements 
what the temperature of the room was. Really? Yeah, because every time I you have, have no you idea. have a spreadsheet of this so that you can look down, okay, was my mold clean enough? Was the oven cold when I started it? Was the room warm enough? Was it too cold? Did I accidentally So essentially over-mix? trying to minimize... The things that could make it go wrong again exactly in the so you streamline it and so then you you start taking out things you're like okay well this batch did this okay well maybe it was because of the temperature so next time you adjust the temperature yeah or next time you adjust how long you whip something so at a certain speed and so that's that's how i tend to break things down when